This piece is a lamination. It's created with two rolls of material that then are combined into one single material. And when we shine light on it, the material will then transform. So you'll see that the elements open and close just by shining light onto this. Materials architect Skylar Tibbetts and his team at MIT's Self-Assembly Lab are working with materials that can transform themselves. So if you take shoes, for example, we each have a different pair of shoes for everything we do. But we're imagining one piece of apparel that can transform. If you start running, they can become more breathable. Or if it starts raining, they become waterproof. Or if you go on grass, it grows cleats. So we're imagining products that can adapt to your everyday needs. And as your performance changes, or as the climate changes around you, the product is adapting. These materials respond to the same triggers that nature does. Sunlight, moisture, and temperature. Our vision is to make every material a smart material. Everyday materials like metal, wood, plastic, leather, textiles. We want all of these traditional materials that we work with to have this programmable capability. And he's also developed a way to build objects from scratch. We recently developed a new printing process called rapid liquid printing. Typically 3D printers are fairly slow. You know, you print objects about this size. So we came up with a new process where we actually print into a tank of gel. By printing in that, we eliminate gravity. We can just draw in 3D space. A whole range of different materials, from flexible materials to rigid materials, even to concretes. Then there are the systems that build themselves a process known as self-assembly. Self-assembly is a process where structure and functionality emerge on their own. So in the natural world, biology, chemistry, physics, all of these things build themselves. But in the human world, we come up with an idea and then we force them into place. And we're interested in challenging that. Looking at how these products can be smarter, responding to the environment or responding to the user. If you have moisture, you might want to use wood. If you have metal, you might want to use heat to activate it. And the way that we design how those materials come together allows us to control how it folds, curls, bends, or twists. And this process isn't just intended for building shoes and furniture. Skyler and his team are thinking much bigger. So this is an experiment we're running where we're trying to develop a system where we can sort of collaborate with the waves to grow islands or to build sandbars. The idea is that by strategically placing designed structures in the ocean, the force of incoming waves could be used to accumulate enough sand to build new land masses. If successful, this might one day be used to combat sea level rise or beach erosion in at-risk communities. Typically, we think about designers that have this brilliant idea and we send it to people or robots to build. And we're trying to really develop a collaboration with the environment, whether that's moisture or sunlight or waves or temperature, all of these forces in the environment we think can be new design generators. It can make us able to design and create things we couldn't have imagined by creating this seamless collaboration with materials and the environment.